Welcome to the show. I'm Jen. My guest today is Alan Draper. He's a serial entrepreneur, investor, growth expert, attorney, podcast host, and we can't forget his biggest role is a husband and dad. Thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. How it's are a pleasure. you? pleasure. Great. You got a lot going on. I do. Yeah, I We're going to try and cover and share some of that so people can learn a little bit more about you and all the great things that you're doing in our community, too. Great. So start with your childhood because mm -hmm. you have a great journey and a great story. So how do you feel that your childhood uh, influenced what you're doing today? Well, I came from kind of meager, from a meager upbringing. And so I learned how to work. I grew up in a farming community on the Oregon-Idaho border. And um, my world back then was really small. People didn't really leave our small farming community. And um, so I learned how to work and that's kind of, you know, taught me that if there's something that I want to go after, I'm going to have to work for it. And you had that vision at that young age to want maybe to be an attorney or to be in the business world. Was there something you were exposed to or something that like resonated at that age or that you saw or talked to someone? I think it's in my genes a little bit. My uncles are all entrepreneurs in their own ways. And um, it's just always something I wanted to do. Yeah. And, and saying that they were probably mentors to you, right? In, in a way. Absolutely. Yeah. I saw that they weren't afraid of kind of going out on their own, hanging a shingle and seeing what they could create. So that fearless um, attitude that you saw, you come into businesses and you sort of mentor them as well as really guide them in elevating what they're doing in their business. So how do you do that? Yeah, so I discuss the individual needs which, with each business owner and just kind of get to know what, what they need and what their unique challenges are. Um, a lot of times it's something as small as helping them overcome some fear about making a new hire or scaling their businesses. And so do you gravitate to certain industries or certain types of companies when you're working with them? Are there, are there certain ones that you prefer to work with? So I'm an expert in home service businesses. So landscaping, window washing, pest control, things like that. I get a lot of clients from, from that industry, but um, really, I've advised software companies, restaurants, um, so there's a wide array of folks that I help and speak with. That's great. So talking about different industries, as a child, you worked some jobs. Yeah. One of them that I thought was so unique and interesting is an asparagus farm. I know that asparagus has to grow somewhere, but I really didn't think about an asparagus farm. What, what, what did you do on the asparagus farm? What is an asparagus farm like? So I actually had never really seen one until I went out to to work on one and um, You know, it's it's like any other type of field and you handpick at least back then They would have us handpick <clears throat> the asparagus and so we'd have like a little bucket on our side and like a little knife and bend over and you do it like one by one so it's wow. a little tedious and would you pop a few in your mouth while you were um, or is it like not as good, just <laughs> yeah, raw no, on the it's, farm? Yeah, exactly. Dirt, dirt on it and stuff it had to be washed and Do stuff. Do you have so. an aversion to asparagus now? Or um, No, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm an entrepreneur. I'd love to know what's the one piece of advice that you feel all entrepreneurs should have? I think it's making sure they understand their vision and their goals. That's something that a lot of, especially startups, have issues with. They, they get into business knowing they just want to do something else. But I help a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs just get focused on what they want to accomplish and why they're trying to accomplish it. That's a, that's a huge thing, and that helps a lot with not just the direction of their company, but with motivation and everything That's 100% else. was me. I mean, I want to do PR and then just started doing it without kind of backing up and saying, what is that vision and mission and all of those things that you're talking about. So uh, I, and then I had to back up and kind of regroup to do that. So I could see that being that, 
you know, path that a lot of entrepreneurs, they just get excited and want to, you know, take on that that business and not stop to think about all those other important key elements. Yeah, one of the nice things about having a vision and setting goals is as entrepreneurs, we get to positions where we need to solve problems and overcome challenges. And a lot of times people will be asking me, hey, what should I do about this? Or what should I do about that? And I always try to bring them back to their vision. Mm -hmm. what, what are you trying to accomplish and why are you trying to accomplish it? And if you have those things in mind, the answers become a lot more clear. Yeah, I would think you'd have to dive deep into that because someone might say to be the biggest or to make the most money, exactly. but it's got to be way deeper than that. Yeah, and the more specific and the more clear your vision and goals are, the easier they are to attain. Mm -hmm. And especially it, it helps with motivation as you know, you can mentally picture where you want to end up. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot with just the direction that you're heading and problem solving and everything else. Helps a lot more than just being super vague. Mm -hmm. And that probably translates, ends up translating into a lot of other aspects of their life. Personally, maybe it's you know running a marathon or something with their family or something like that. I've got to imagine it probably then fosters a whole like attitude for them. Absolutely, so for me, I have visions for every area of my life. Mm -hmm. And I try to encourage those that I consult to do the same, mm -hmm. to have a vision, have targets. Um, business is just one of those areas for me. Yeah, no, that's great. So how do you define success? So for me personally, and I get asked this question quite a bit, but um, for me, it's, am I in control of my time? And if I'm in control of my time, then I can live my life however I want, if mm -hmm. that's um, building businesses or spending time with my family or whatever. So my definition of success is just being able to control my resources and the most valuable of which is my time. I like that because I'm thinking about, you know, when I get to go work out and when I get to go see my family and when I get to do certain things with work or with my boyfriend, like it really, that that's, I, I've never really, looked at it that way, but yeah, because then you feel good that you've got to do those things. And like you said, you're in control of that. So yeah, that's, that's exactly. really great. Um, what drives you to do what you do? Um, one of the reasons I was put on this planet was to help people build businesses. I don't know why, but I, I love it. And I don't have to go find motivation. I just... I wake him up in the morning just being excited you about are. it. Yeah. It's just me doing what I do and I love it. So So getting your law degree was a part of your journey. Was that when you talk about, you know, that this is just who you are. So was the law degree important in that or did you really think I'm gonna go just be a lawyer? Or did you feel it would then translate back to this this part of what you're doing as a business, you know, consultant? So I always knew that I was going to be in the business world. Um, there was a point where I was deciding whether to get an MBA or a law degree. And so I, I knew that eventually I would end up in startups and mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur. Um, and my law degrees actually helped out quite a bit in different, in different um, areas. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, it was, it, it was all part of the plan, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's great. You've done it, done it well, and you inspire a lot of people and businesses, and you've proven that success. I know a few of those businesses, so, um, I, and I see that trajectory, so I'm excited for what you've got going. So before we wrap up, there is something else about Alan that I didn't tell him we were gonna talk about our show, but I had to bring some of my shoes oh, from yeah. my Jordan collection oh, awesome. to get your thoughts and opinion. Oh yeah. <laughs> they might be a little dusty though. So oh, these those are, are um, awesome. So uh, yeah, what do you got in your collection? Um, so I only collect uh, Jordans yeah. and it stems from my childhood actually. Um, and a lot of these original Jordans I got um, for Christmas. That was my only Christmas gift. And um, the next day I'd wear them out in the snow and ruin them. I wish I still had oh. all the originals, but um, yeah. So I focus mostly, mostly on Jordans. I do buy a couple of, um, recently purchased a few pairs of Kobe Bryant shoes. Yeah. 
Um, but but yeah, especially the vintage stuff like yeah. like this. Those are very cool. Yeah, I just brought one out. I mean, obviously they have their their matching and yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Well, I know Those that we awesome. had that in common, so I had yeah. to break up my shoes. And Jordan is definitely uh, someone that I look up to as far as an athlete and what he's done and accomplished. So yeah, and a great businessman. Oh yeah. So. Amen. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. Appreciate it, and uh, hopefully we'll have you back. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you next time on Now with Jen.